Absolutely, there's absolutely proof. To start with, I would ask people to use their sense of reason, use their own power of observation to look up, to simply look up. How come we can have a grid pattern in our skies one day and nothing the next? Why do we have massive trails in our skies during the daytime and most cases at night, 10, 11, 12 at night, you can see aircraft leaving nothing in the sky. Even if you ignore all the data, look up and ask yourself how you could possibly turn a condensation trail on and off. How you could possibly, if atmospheric conditions were creating this, how could you possibly have a trail from horizon to horizon next to an aircraft leaving virtually nothing? We see these trails down 20,000 feet, sub 20,000 feet. The conditions necessary for a naturally occurring vapor trail cannot happen at those altitudes in the temperature range we see it happening in. We can't have that kind of condensation, especially behind a high bypass turbofan jet engine, especially at the altitudes we're at. We have tutorials on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org with animations to show what this fan is about. That's the engine that's fitted on all commercial tankers and all military aircraft. That's a jet-powered fan. By design, it's nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail, except under the most extreme circumstances. 85% of the air that passes through it is non-combusted. Many have argued that we have an increase in jet air traffic, so we should see more trails. But what we're seeing are these trails in locations where there is no commercial traffic. We had a FAA flight GPS tracking done at the request of a congressional rep that showed massive loops taking place over the whole Pacific West Coast of these aircraft spraying. And at the altitudes we see them at now, we see these trails down 20,000 feet, sub 20,000 feet. In every place we would expect to see this fallout, we see it. It's bioavailable. These particulates are so small, they're absorbed in everything from plant life. They enter straight through our lung lining into our bloodstream where they're, they adhere to cell receptors like a plaque. The snow off the side of Mount Shasta, thought to be a pristine water source. Snow samples off the side of Mount Shasta, as tested at the state certified lab by a former Forest Service biologist, showed 61,000 parts per billion of aluminum. Highly toxic snow. Many times more aluminum in the snow than in the soil beneath the snow. We have precipitation tests, Snow tests, every human test subject we test, hair, blood, or urine, has off the chart levels of aluminum and barium and strontium, metals named in climate engineering patents in their system. Patents like stratospheric Wells box seeding for reduction of global warming, assigned to Hughes Aircraft in 1991. We have patents for other forms of artificial cloud formation. The list is so immensely long and complicated, we simply encourage people to look at it. We have the entire list posted. The individuals who don't want to face this issue try to claim that because aluminum is so abundant in the environment, 8% of the Earth's strata, we should see it everywhere, and that's a blatant lie. Aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form naturally. Aluminum can't exist in that state unless it's been mined and refined and sprayed, period. And now it is showing up in free form everywhere. And on top of all this, congressional documents, presidential documents, military documents, patents, 
how much proof do we need? Historical fact, weather warfare going on around the globe, Project Popeye, Project Storm Fury. We have mountains of facts to prove beyond any reasonable doubt these programs are absolutely real and ongoing, causing cataclysmic damage to the planet and our health.